Lateral runout's an important consideration as we go through wheel tire and or brake service. It's something that can create vibrations and issues that a customer might notice. Runout, two types of runout. One is lateral, one is radial. Lateral runout is where the surface here in this plane creates a buildup. It could be from corrosion. It could be just irregularity of surface. It could be that a part warps over time. But any of those things that create lateral runout would cause the wheel that's mounted this way to move back and forth. And so at the hat surface of the brake rotor, that can cause vibrations, generally from the wheel and tire assembly because it's the one that's impacted. Going further in, if we go behind the rotor, the hub flange, if it has lateral run out, that can create brake vibrations and pulsations. So there's a lot of places that we can measure lateral run out. And then radial run out is, if I was to measure here in the rotation, if I see run out here or a change, that could create problems as well. This video, we're gonna focus on lateral run out, get acquainted with the dial indicator and how to set it up. So I've got two different types of dial indicators that I might encounter in a shop environment. Both utilize a very similar type of dial indicator like this, and really just the mounting is what changes. The dial indicator that I'm using here is a plunge style one. It's got a small roller ball on the end here, hopefully to help us with the surface of say a hub or a rotor. It's able to move. And this one, if we look in the center, this is where we'll know how and why and what it's gonna measure, is got the graduations represent one thousandth of an inch or 0 0.001 inches. And so that gives me a ballpark as far as what the change is going to be and how I'm gonna record that result. How this gets mounted is really the difference between these two kits that I've got. One common place that we see, especially a lot in machinery and in some applications on vehicles, is to use a magnetic base like this. These typically have a main point to be mounted, there would be a secondary arm that then holds the dial indicator. And they typically have an on off. So there's a switch that basically rotates a magnet inside to change whether or not it's going to stick to metal. The other common thing that we see in automotive world is this snake style set like this here. So this one has got a, a flexible hose that's made up of several different collets. There is a stainless steel wire that runs in the center of this. I've got some adjustment out here for length, and then I've got this lever that basically helps change it into a fixed state versus a loose state like this. All it is is a cam that's pulling or letting go a little bit of this wire. At the end at this side, I've got a place to connect my dial indicator. At this side, I've got threaded output to go with my vice grips that come with these kits. So typically I've got a set of vice grips like this. There's a couple different threaded inserts or holes for me to place the snake attachment into this. To get this set up, I wanna start with just my vice grip pair. I wanna find a place that I can attach these where I know that they're not going to move. They need to be fixed and be on a pretty solid surface. And I'm gonna start with just these because I wanna be really cautious about not suspending the dial indicator until I've got a sound and structural type of setup. So I'm gonna find a place to put these. I wanna avoid things like a floating caliper that have travel and movement in them, or going through something like a tie rod or a ball joint. So if I can get to something fixed, say like up here on this strut, that would be a good location that I know is not gonna have much travel. Next, I'm gonna bring out the snake portion of this and make the attachment there. Generally speaking, it's easier to attach and have success with this snake layout if I'm traveling down rather than coming up with the snake. Um, gravity on the upward sort of trend will fight you um, and we'll see more problems trying to get that set up and have that hold well. Next, I bring in my dial indicator. I'm gonna be very cautious with this. These are incredibly fragile. Um, it's easy to break them if they get dropped. So I'm gonna really be careful, two hands, slide this in. This small opening opens right here. I'm able to go through that. I've got to make sure I've got enough slack and space there with this thumb wheel. And ultimately I want to grab the collar right here. So the shank of the actual dial indicator is where I'm gonna put my clamp. This is the portion that moves, that needs to stay free. And so this one I'm gonna hold in place, figure out where I wanna be, kinda of right here in the center. I'm gonna tilt it this way for a reading so we can see it on the camera. And then to get the snake itself set, I'm gonna come down here, this knurled 
adjustment right here. I need to make that tighter, so I need to run it toward the vice grips. And so I'm gonna do that just until I feel a little bit of resistance. I need to make sure my lever up here is parallel with the snake itself. So right there, really light, just with my fingers, I feel there's some resistance. And so I can come up here, move my lever 180 degrees, and then see how we hold. And so just right off the bat, you can see it's relaxing a little bit. I had just a few thousandths worth of change on my dial. The next change I can check I can do to make sure that this is in good shape is to move my needle of my dial indicator just a few times, and make sure there's not substantial change that this whole setup is moving. Um, it looks like we're staying put fairly well. And so we've got a good setup here. The next thing that we need to do to ensure that this is flat and that this is not going to travel is that we need to put some extra fasteners here. So one of the ways that I can do that is with this small adapter right here. And so this is really just a washer, um, but it's got a nice taper seat in the center so that my lug nut will help pull, rather push that lug nut and rotor down in an even manner. So I'm gonna put these on all five. We're gonna go ahead and move our dial indicator safely out of the way and then I can put my lug nuts on. Now, it's important to note the type of lug nut that I'm using and to make sure that this does match the tapered surface of this adapter. These are shank style lug nuts, but they have a taper at the end. And so I can use those with this because I've got that match of a taper here and a taper there. I'm going to avoid using air tools to put these down. I'm just gonna run them down by hand and then we'll torque them to the specification, the wheel torque specification from the manufacturer. So now here we are set up, ready to take a measurement. We could take some time to zero the collar here. The, the outer dial does spin and so we could zero that. What we're looking for is a change. So we're looking for the high point and the low point and then we'll do some math to figure out what the actual travel is. Sometimes it's hard to see the beginning and the end as you go through a full rotation. And so on this rotor, we've got this pretty defined mark right here that says 26. We could look for that. Or I've added a white line right here that's gonna help me know where I'm at in my rotation. So I've got my white line. I'm gonna go ahead and use the passenger side wheel in order to rotate this so that I don't have any influence of pulling on the rotor or any components. I make one full rotation, come back just past where my white line was. And so we started at zero on our dial and we saw not much more than two thousandths worth of travel. And so the spec on this car is 39 ten thousandths or just under four thousandths worth of lateral run out on the rotor face. That's the process of using the dial indicator to measure lateral run out on a rotor face. There's a lot of places that we can use this tool. The dial indicator gets used in a lot of places for run out, both lateral, radial, end play, many places, many different components. The objective for this video is to get us acquainted with using this tool and using it safely so that we don't drop it and damage it, and also to get consistent and accurate measurements.